Hello everybody, Mr. Chan here, about to do Algebra 2, Lesson 2-2, two -two, Standard Form of a Quadratic Function, on page 35 of your note taker. Let's get started here. All right. Jordan and Emery are rewriting the vertex form of a quadratic function y equals 2 times x minus 4 squared plus 5 in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is called a standard form. All right. Question. Did Jordan rewrite the equation correctly? Did Emery? Let's take a look at their work here. Ooh, I see something right away under Jordan's work. Looks like he distributed the two to the parentheses first. Unfortunately, because of order of operations, you must be doing powers first before you can do any multiplication that power must be done first. So that thing that he just did there is illegal for Jordan. Power comes before multiplication. Okay, did Emery do the right thing? Let's take a look here. Aha, x minus four squared becomes x squared minus 16. Well, she did something illegal too, right there. It should be expanded and foiled or apply the distributive property. All right, so they both made mistakes. Next question. Without rewriting the equation, how could you prove that Jordan's or Emery's equation is not equivalent to the original? Well, you can always substitute in values. Another thing you can do is graph the equations and compare. All right, habits of mind. Casey rewrote the vertex form too. Y equals two times X minus four squared plus five equals two. Oh, I see it right there. Casey's not following order of operations. He tried to add negative four plus five and got one. That's illegal. Come on, Casey, you can do better than that. Next page. All right. Find the vertex of a quadratic function in standard form. I have to warn you, what I'm about to show you is kind of a proof from geometry. Take what we know about the vertex form, A's, H's, and K's, expand and look at what we get here in terms of the standard form. I want you to realize the proof itself is in the textbook. I'm not going to write it out, but it's in the textbook. You can look for yourself. And when you look for the textbook for the proof, converting from vertex form to standard form. 
you will see an upcoming formula. Sorry about that. Run out of space. I'm going to rewrite that a little smaller. All right. When you stand back and take a look at this whole thing, scooch that over a little bit. You will notice that the a value in front of x is still a. The b value is kind of interesting. In front of x, let me circle those. a x squared. The a value is still a. The b value is interesting in front of x. Is right there. And the C value is actually the whole thing right there, the constant. B literally is equal to negative 2 A H. If we isolate H, the X value of the vertex by dividing by negative two a to both sides, we get a new formula, which is the x value of the vertex. Negative b over two a, ladies and gentlemen, memorize that. h equals negative b over two a. We use the letter x for that when we're utilizing this formula. This is the x value of the vertex. Negative b over 2a, okay? Right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna point this out too. This is also known as the axis of symmetry. Vertical line that splits the parabola in half. Not only is it the axis of symmetry, but the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. Let's go ahead and find the vertex with number one off to the side here. The way to do this in standard form is not like um, vertex form. You can't just read HK from here. There's no HK. It's AX squared plus BX plus C. That is the challenge. I do need my formula, x equals negative b over 2a. Remember, x replaces h from the left side. This is the x value, OK? Let's plug the values in after we realize that a formula is in standard form. a is 1, b is negative 8. And C is positive 5, okay? Well, we didn't really need the 5 there. Let's plug the information in. And just be careful with those negative signs. All right, B is negative 8. A is positive 1. Reduce that, you get positive 8 over 2. That equals to 4. That is the X value of the vertex. All we need now is the y value, okay? How do we figure that out? Plug it in, substitute into the equation, x squared minus eight x plus five. They're using function notation. I'm gonna be fancy and do the same thing. F of, well, normally x, I'm gonna put in the four literally everywhere I see an X. Let's plug it in. 
4 squared is 16, minus 8 times 4 is 32, plus 5. Work from left to right, 16 minus 32 is negative 16. That equals negative 11. All right. Therefore, my vertex is at 4, negative 11. Yay. Good job. Any questions? All right. Number two looks innocent enough. I'm going to walk you through how to graph this particular quadratic in standard form. Step one is find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Okay, kind of have to write small now. AOS is called the axis of symmetry. Just want to point that out. AOS. Here we go. Let's plug the information in. Negative B over 2A. B is negative 6. A is 1. Clean that up. I get positive 6 over 2 or 3. Interesting. Plug in 3 into the equation to solve for the y value. Here we go. Plug it in, plug it in, plug in 3. Okay, don't freak out about that f of 3. That's just function notation, okay? That's like y. Don't freak out about that. 3 squared is 9, minus 6 times 3 is 18, minus 1. That equals to negative 9, minus 1, that equals negative 10. Ladies and gentlemen, there's my vertex. 3, negative 10. I'm going to run out of room here, aren't I? So let's go ahead and I notice that my vertex is at 3, negative 10. Let's go and draw our axes like this in the fourth quadrant. All right. Neg I'm sorry, 3, negative 10 is the vertex. It's also known as the axis of symmetry. AOS. 3, negative 10. Let's see how far we go. Oh, we're very close right there. There it is. Okay. Okay, that's step one. Step two, I need a point to connect everything to. Well, there's something we can do that. That is to use something called using the y-intercept. Technically, any graph, you want to set x equal to zero. And when you do that, you get this. Zero squared minus six times zero minus, oh, the zeros killed most of the graph except for that number by itself. That number by itself is the letter C, ladies and gentlemen. On the y-axis, go to negative one and put a dot there. That's your y-intercept, folks. Connect the vertex to that point, it's opening up. Remember, parabolas are symmetric with the axis of symmetry splitting the parabola in half. From that y-intercept to the axis of symmetry, I can see that it's three units apart. I can just eyeball another three over here and make another point out here. And boom, there we go. We have our parabola. Nice job. The parabola is symmetric.
it mirrors over the x-axis across the, uh, I'm sorry, it mirrors from the y-intercept across the axis of symmetry. Yay. All right. Let's try number three. Get ready for a challenge. Oh, wait. Have you answered the habits of mind here? Uh, Yusan said that for the quadratic function, f of x equals the 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. The vertex is at the point 0, 1. Is she correct? Well, let's use our formula, negative b over 2a, and see what happens. Let's see if Yusan is correct. Identify a and b. a is 2, b is 3. Put those into the formula. Will I get a zero for my x value? Nope, this is not equal to zero. I was looking for that. So the answer is no. All right, next problem. Woo, a real world parabola. A water balloon was thrown from a window. The height of the water balloon over time can be modeled by the function y equals negative 16x squared plus 160x plus 50. It's definitely in standard form, isn't it, folks? You notice that the a value is negative, which makes sense because this parabola is upside down. It's opening downwards. What was the maximum height of the water balloon after it was thrown? The maximum height is right there, which happens to be the vertex. Let's go ahead and go through the same motions and figure that out. Let's find the axis of symmetry or the x value. x equals negative b over 2a. This equals to negative b is 160 in that formula, divided by 2 times negative 16. Let's clean that up. Negative 160 over negative 32 does reduce to positive 5. Ah, it takes, oh yeah, there it is, 5 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. There's my axis of symmetry. It takes 5 seconds to reach the maximum height. But what is that height? We've got to plug in 5 into the equation. Here we go. Plug it in, plug it in. These real world problems get a little challenging. Oh boy. So negative 400 plus 800 plus 50 is 450 is the maximum height. Yay, there it is. 450. How long do it take? Five seconds. We already got that earlier. Sweet. Nice job. All right, example four is next. Whew. This is one of the harder things that we do in algebra. Two, we have to come up with a parabola based off of three random points. You have to treat those points as X's and Y's. I'm going to use different colors here. We are going to put it into the standard equation. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C three times because there are three different points. I'm going to color code them. X, Y, X, Y, and X, Y. And I want to literally substitute it into that standard form and go from there. Okay. Woo. This is where technology will help us solve this problem. 
First point is 2, negative 12. Let's plug it in. The y value is negative 12. Times that. All right, so I'm replacing x's and y's into here. X is 2, and when you clean that up, you'll get an equation. A12 equals a 4A plus 2B plus C. Keep that in mind. Great. Second equation, the coordinate point is negative 1, negative 15. Plug those numbers in. Negative 1, negative 15. Plug that in. Clean it up. Ooh, negative one squared is positive one. Minus B plus C. There's my second equation. Third equation, here we go. We are plugging in negative four, negative 90. That's a crazy number. All right. Now let's clean that up. Negative 4 squared is positive 16 minus 4b plus c. All right. So we would have made you do this in Algebra 1. But because we are in Algebra 2, we are going to use technology. Because right now we've created a system of equations. You may use your graphing calculator, go to Equa, and choose simultaneous equations. To solve for this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and invoke my version of it. So I have Desmos loaded up with the matrix calculator here. I'm going to create a new matrix with three rows and four columns. I'm now going to enter in those coefficients into this particular problem. They are 4, 2, 1, negative 12. That's the first row. Second row, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 15. And finally, third row, we have some big numbers here, 16 for the first number, negative 4 is next, positive 1. And that equals a negative 90. I'm going to take a quick moment to double check everything, make sure I got all the numbers right. Looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and enter. Okay. We need to solve this particular matrix. We click on RREF matrix A, and there it is. Look at that resultant matrix equation. One x equals negative 4, 1 y equals positive 5, 1 z equals negative 6. Let's go ahead and switch back to the notes and put that information in. So the way I put it into that matrix equation is the red, orange, and the green equations like this. I mean, I could have made you guys solve this manually, but that would be a lot of work. Using our graphing calculator or decimals, we got an answer of dun, 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 y equals negative 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. 
All right. How are we doing out there? We're doing good? Great. Number five, I'm going to briefly talk about. This is going to require a graphing calculator. And I'll do that in class. But I want to just mention there is no physical way to do this manually with by hand because it's all done on the calculator. Quadratic regression basically takes real world data and forms a curve of best fit from the data. We will practice with that on the calculator at school. This curve of best fit is for a quadratic regression. On your calculator, especially the TI, you want to look for that particular function. On the Casio, I believe it's just x squared as the button you're trying to do. So basically, you're going to take your graph and calculator, go to stat, make sure you put in for your first list the time, and the second list you want to put in for the height. And then from there, you want to graph it. You got to tell it where to put it. Put in a graph one, doesn't matter. And then after you graph it, you want to do a quick calculation and you're looking for, ah, there it is, x squared. When you do that, you will get, because this is all calculator work, y equals negative 16x squared plus 12x plus 10. Amazing technology. Question at the bottom. How many points does it take to determine the equation of a quadratic function? Why are so many points uh, used in example four? Well, at a minimum, you need three. With example four, the more real world data you have, the more accurate your quadratic regression line is. All right, I'm ready for the last page. Let's do it. Let's turn to page 38. Long lecture today. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little better. There we go. Oh, much better. Okay, find the vertex and y intercept of the quadratic function. Some key formulas you'll need, of course. x equals negative b over 2a. This is the x value of the vertex. And then you plug in that answer, the x value, into the function itself to get the y value. Okay, let's do that. Right, here we go. It's in standard form. Identify your a, b, and c. Hmm, we already got the y intercept. Yay! The number by itself is the y intercept. Very nice. To find the vertex, we got to put it into the form of negative b over 2a. Let's plug in negative b and 2a. That gives me positive 12 over 6, which equals 2. That's half the battle. That 2 now must be plugged into my y function to get the y value of the vertex. Plug that number in, you just got two and two. Order of operations, you must square the two and not multiply by the three. Two squared is four. Be careful there, please. Multiply the middle term, and we will get 12 minus 24 plus 40. 
12 minus 24 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 40 is positive 28. Ding, 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 ding. The vertex is at two, the number we just plugged in, comma 28. All right. Number six is essentially the same thing. Let's go ahead and do, the, do that with less talking. C7 is y intercept. Great. Plug in B and A. And we will get negative 4 over negative 2. And that simply needs to be a positive 2. Let's plug it into our equation. And we're plugging in 2. Clean it up very carefully. 2 squared is 4, does a negative sign right in front, plus 4 times 2 is 8. Clean that up. Ah, I get 11. Vertex is at 2, 11. All right. Whew. Number 7. Find the maximum point of the parabola. Basically, they're just asking for the y value. You're essentially going through the same thing. And the reason why they call it the maximum point is that both of these are opening downward because of the a is negative. All right, let's do it. It's the same as number five and six, basically. Plug the numbers in. We don't need C this time, do we? Nope. Clean that up. Oh, there's my X value. Plug it in to my equation and get the Y value. Plug in negative four. Clean that up. Watch out, don't do negative two times negative four first. You gotta do negative four squared. Order of operations, positive 16. Negative 16 my, uh, times negative four in the middle is plus 64. Let's keep going. And there it is, 52 is the maximum value. That is the y value of the vertex of a parabola opening upside down. All right, number eight, same process. Here we go. Plug in 12 for B, and A is negative 1. Watch out for those invisible, the negative 1s. There's negative 12 over negative uh, 2, and this reduces the positive 6. Plug that number to the equation. And watch out for your order of operations here. Negative is not part of the six. The six is squared, that's uh, positive 36. Slap on the negative in front. 12 times six is 72. Clean that up. Oh, there it is. 21 is your maximum value. All right. Number nine is exactly like number four. I'm not going to do this for you. It's the same process involving a graphing calculator. Please show work and try it on your own. But I will give you the answer though. 
y equals negative x squared minus 6x plus 6. Check that, yeah? Woo. And that involves a graphing calculator. I don't really know what they want for number 10 and number 11. I think they just want us to find the vertex. Same process involving, you know, finding the axis of symmetry first. And then plugging in and figuring out what the vertex is. I'm going to leave that alone for you guys to try, okay? All right. That was quite a lengthy lecture there. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Have a good day.